Hi everyone, uh, welcome to our product update for Q2 2023. Uh, thank you all for taking the time out to join us for the session today. Um, for those of you who haven't met me before, I am Jenna Culshaw, the Product Knowledge Manager here at Access Planet. Um, and today I'll take you through the new features and changes for Q2 in 2023. Uh, and we also have a release coming up very soon, so we'll go over uh, the content of that. Uh, if you have any questions, please pop them in the chat as we go, and I'll cover those all off at the end. So as I mentioned, uh, agenda-wise, first we'll go over the new functionality and features that we've released in Q2 this year. Then I'll take you through the features that we have upcoming. So some of them is very soon, and some of them are a little bit further away. Uh, and then finally, we'll wrap up with that Q&A at the end. Okay, so our major update in Q2 was our upgrade from Google's Universal Analytics tool to their new GA4 tool. Uh, in our previous, our older Universal Analytics integration, things like page hits and user behavior were tracked. So this meant that you could identify when users landed in the basket, when they exited, and events like page scrolling. Um, in our new GA4 integration, there is support for all of that, but there is also support for tracking e-commerce, which means you can monitor revenue and activities like purchases. So that means in your Google Analytics account, you can compare your basket items for the popularity of those. You can track your purchases and you can also monitor dropouts throughout your basket. Uh, our GA4 integration is supported in both the new checkout basket and our older shopping basket. And this is a free module. So if you've not yet implemented Google Analytics into your platform, then get in touch with your customer success manager and they can get that enabled with you. Also, this quarter, we've rolled out some quite big performance improvements across the platform. Uh, the biggest changes are speed improvements with the platform data grids and the checkout basket being the big focus. There's also been big improvements made with the invoice generator as well. Um, so I mean, while performance improvements aren't particularly exciting, this, this has been quite a huge project here and has made a big difference to the general experience of using the platform. So hopefully you've all felt the benefit of that. Um, and then to wrap up our changes, the new things that we've released in Q2, we've made some small user usability improvements kind of throughout. Um, now, while these are quite small, they should make using the platform that little bit nicer to use. These are like quality of life improvements. So first up, uh, when you create a new filter on your data grids, they will no longer have the default name of my filter. This will stop you accidentally ending up with lots of filters called my filter, which is just not very useful. Uh, so I'll give you a quick show of where that is. So when you're in the platform, if you head over to have a look at any data grid, obviously we've got our filters displayed at the top here. And then if you go to create a new filter, there is no default filter name populated for you. And if you try to save that one, it's going to give you a little information warning message. Cool. Uh, next is that you can now remove columns from your data grid really quickly by just right clicking on that column and selecting that new remove column option. So I'll just again, give you a quick show of that as well. Just cancel out this filter. So while you're in the data grid, if there's any of those columns that you just don't want to include anymore, all you need to do is just right click on the column and remove it. So this supports you with managing the data that's included in your data grids very, very quickly. And finally, we've introduced a little red triangle at the top right corner of any columns that are performing poorly. And um, it might just be slowing down your data grid. So flagging this to you so that you can evaluate for yourself whether you need that column to stay in um, or whether you can remove it to improve your data grid's performance. So it's going to load a little bit quicker for you. OK, moving on to the, the features that are coming very soon. Uh, so it looks as though we're only a couple of weeks away from our latest update being released. Uh, so I'll take you through the changes that are coming in that update first. 
So first of all, we have uh, two checkout updates. The first one is support for account and account group based price schemes. Job role based price schemes will be coming later. So if you if the only feature you're waiting for in order to make the switch over to the new checkout basket is that account and account group price schemes, then following this next release, you should be good to start making that switch over to the new basket. Uh, price schemes are essentially a way of you overriding prices for certain groups of users. So they're a little bit different to discounts and that discounts is always a, it, well, it's, it's a discount. It's a, it's a value that's taken off the amount of the booking. Whereas price schemes is more like a fixed agreed overridden price for certain customers or certain groups of customers. The second change in checkout is to the payment type drop down box. So this is displayed when people reach the payment step of the checkout basket. Now, when someone has multiple options available to them, so they have, say, Stripe and Invoice, or they've got PayPal and WorldPay, um, previously, one of those options would be kind of pre-selected for them, uh, which did mean that some people were just missing the option altogether because they didn't have to make a selection. So now anybody that does have two options available to them at the end will no longer have a pre-selected option. It'll instead say what it says here, the please select payment type. Um, However, anybody who just has one option, so they just have Stripe, this will continue to be pre-selected for them. Cool. Next, moving on to supporting help text throughout the platform, which we'll be slowly rolling out. So uh, we've started with the sessional setting, which is available when you're editing courses, but we will be rolling this out throughout the other forms. So here's a quick preview of that. So the help text will be will be accessible by a little question mark icons on the settings in your platform forms. Um, and it's there to provide kind of clarity on what the settings are for in your platform and um, to help your new team members get to grips with the platform more quickly and confidently. Uh, and also many of those help texts will also include a link to our knowledge base so that you can learn more about the feature and hopefully get a bit more out of your access to the platform. Well, and the final feature in our coming very soon segment is the all or any data grid filters. Here's a quick preview of what that will look like. Be a little toggle option available in those data grid filters. Now, with the new any all toggle option, you'll basically be able to create new filters where instead of all the criteria needing to be met, any of the criteria can be met for that filter to be applied. So I'll put that into perspective, give a few examples. So, for example, you'd be able to build a filter on your courses data grid, which shows you all the courses that are either missing a venue or missing a trainer. So, you know which of those courses still need either of those things arranging. Now, without the any option, this, this filter would only show you courses that are missing both a venue and a trainer. As another example, you'll be able to build a filter that shows you all users that have a job title that either contains manager or director. So that could be useful to build up some nice mailing lists. And just as a quick final example, you'll be able to build up a filter that shows you all of your accounts, all of your customer accounts that either have an active invoice or an active task related to them. Okay, so looking a little bit more longer term, so while these are still coming soon, they're just not quite as soon as the all any filters and the help text. So firstly, we're currently working on quite a big project to support MFA or multi-factor authentication across the login pages in Access Planet. Now, MFA is quickly becoming quite an industry standard to secure logins, protect data, that kind of thing. Uh, so once this is available, if you choose to have it turned on, then your users will be prompted to verify their login uh, whenever they log in on a new device and every 120 days from the same device. And this will all be managed with a one-time passcode sent to their email address. Uh, the next checkout feature that we're working on is support partial payments or deposits through checkout. So with this feature, you can define per course how much of a deposit is required for the booking up front. Uh, your customers can then choose to pay anything from this deposit value right up to the full price of the basket. Um, and first, this is a really great feature to encourage more bookings, especially if you have some quite high value courses that can be a bit much for your customers to pay all at once up front. They can then spread that over multiple payments with you. Now, following that initial booking, 
they would then make further payments by logging into your platform and making a new payment against their invoice. Also in checkout, we've next got support for Barclays EPDQ, which will be our sixth payment gateway in the basket. Then we have a couple of accessibility improvements coming as well. So the first one is to make the little X icon in checkout, which clears your selected bookers and delegates available to tab to on a keyboard. So this will mean that keyboard only users will now be able to use this option. And this is our last high priority accessibility issue within the checkout basket. So we are very, very pleased with that. Uh, and our second accessibility change is within the learner portal. And this is to int introduce alternative text or alt text to this image at the top. So this is the, this is typically your company logo. Um, and it's used as not only for brand reasons, but it's also used as a, as a link to get back to the home page in the portal. And it currently doesn't have any alt text on it, which means people that use screen readers to access the internet have no idea what this logo is, is for. So that's what we'll be doing is adding in that, that alt text to that logo. Next, we have a new column coming to the credit notes data grid to show you which invoice or invoices the credit note has been spent on. So that is this new linked invoice column here. And it will also be a dynamic link. So you can click on it and it will be a shortcut to manage your invoice. So that'll be linked invoice in the credit notes data grid. And then finally, we are working on support for adding custom fields to resources. This will mean you'll be able to capture custom information about your trainers. So things like what languages they're able to deliver training in, and you'll be able to capture information about your venues. So things like uh, opening hours, um, and this information can then be reported on, or it can be used to help you select appropriate resources for uh, each of your courses. All right, before I jump into the q and I'll just give you a quick run through uh, any of the upcoming events we've got here. So this is a link to the customer events page where you can take a look at all of our upcoming events. Uh, we have a free productivity optimization webinar coming towards the end of August. That's on the 24th. And we also have super user training on the 15th of August. And that'll be 150, 150 pounds per person if you'd like to, if you're interested in that. Um, also, just a note, the Q3 product update will be on Thursday, the 5th of October, if you want to pop that in your diaries now. Same time, 10 a.m. Uh, I'll stick all of these links into the chat now. Hopefully that's worked. Lovely, nice. Okay, right, I'll move into the Q&A. Okay. Um, oh, good question, Nicholas. So the MFA to start with, the question is, uh, will MFA be available for training administrators? And yes, that, that is correct, yes. So MFA to start with will be enabled per platform. So it will apply to all users to start. What we're interested in is whether longer term for our kind of all subsequent phases for MFA, whether it would be useful to have that on a set on like a role level. So whether it'd be useful to have just MFA for just training administrators and maybe trainers, uh, but to start, it will be all users, including those training admins, yeah. Uh, Claire, cool. So with the credit notes section, will the related invoice be available in the API? It wouldn't, Claire, but there's not, there's not too much of a need for it because within the API feed, we already have a transactions endpoint where you can look up um, the basically the transaction is what links that invoice to that credit note. So that credit note is recorded as a transaction on the invoice. So that connection is already there then. Hope that makes sense. Oh, Mike, that's a fab question. For the this is the question is uh, the tooltip that pops up for sessional courses. Will we be able to add custom tooltips to custom fields? That's actually a great question. It's something that we've considered. So again, to start with, phase one is just about us getting some standardized, helpful text into the platform to support people. Uh, but longer term, very curious to know if you guys would like to be able to override um, any of that text. So if you'd like to be able to add in your own custom content and standard fields, and then exactly what you said, whether you'd like to be able to add 
your own tool tips for your custom fields. So if you wouldn't mind, we have a product portal where we capture product suggestions. If you wouldn't mind logging that in there, because that the more suggestions we get into this kind of thing, the more likely that is to go ahead. So yeah, plus any examples you can give would be really helpful. Thank you. I'm glad you're thinking about them. Oh, okay, good question from Billy. So uh, the question is, with MFA, we already use single sign-on. Will this conflict in any way? So you can have, you will be able to have both on at the same time. However, the single sign-on will bypass the MFA. So you'd be able to have MFA turned on for any of your other users. So if you've got single sign-on just for internal staff only, just for your admins logging in, then you could enable MFA for your customer base. Um, but uh, yeah, so you could use both, but you can't use both on the same user. The single sign-on will skip right past that MFA. Uh, oh, Bojan, good question. Can MFA be used only for admin accounts and not for regular users? Not yet. So MFA, once it's enabled, this first phase will just be for, well, just be, it will be for all users to start. Um, we are looking at, in future phases, limiting that down. So when you enable MFA, you'd be able to say, just enable it for admins or just enable it for admins and trainers. But to start, it will just be all users. Um, but it's a, it's a very good question. It's something we've thought about. Fabulous. Oh, Nicholas, good question. So the custom fields for resources, will they be available for resource requirements? Um, they won't be to start. So one thing that we are looking at doing as well, so slightly separate, but it, it's related enough for me to talk about it, um, is we're looking at being able to share custom fields with other modules. So the areas that we're starting with is accounts and course dates. So when you create a course date custom field, you'll be able to share that with delegates and placeholders. So you'll then be able to trigger your workflows or um, include including your data grids, those course fields when you're sending things about delegates or about placeholders. And this would be a similar thing to be honest. So this would be you create your resource based custom field. Lovely. Maybe it's a trainer thing. And then in the resource requirements, we, we would need to share those fields in order to access it there. But it's a, it's a good question. Yeah. Uh, and then will MFA affect the e-learning direct links? So I might have to double check on this because I'm pretty sure the e-learning direct links don't require login. If they don't require login, then there will be no impact at all. The, this MFA, this MFA, the MFA functionality has been implemented in each of the different login pages. But I will double check that and get back to you. Great questions today, everybody. Okay, please pop in the chat if you can think of anything else. Chat, the q and I mean. Fabulous. Well, I'll, I'll wait on for another minute, but um, if no one's got any more questions, then you are free to go. Thank you very much uh, for all your time today. Thank you for attending. I really do hope, hope you found it useful. Um, if you do have any questions later about anything that we talked about today, whether it's the recently released features or anything that's still to come, uh, please get in touch with a member of the team here. And I hope you have a lovely rest of your day. Uh, cool. Nicholas, sorry, final question. Uh, will custom fields be available for resource requirements? So that's not yet. No, we are very keen to keep expanding our custom fields uh, offering. Uh, so it's slowly growing and that sharing sharing custom fields and resource-based custom fields are the next things that, that we've got coming. Um, if you could please pop a suggestion in for it, that would be great. And like I mentioned before, any examples of how you would use this are really handy for us to make sure that we're gonna be developing the things in the right way. Um, yeah, that'd be fab, thank you.
All right, brilliant. We'll wrap it up there then. Thank you very much, everybody. Um, I hope you have a lovely rest of your day. Bye.